Oh, it's a triple Mac attack coming your way. Jenny McDonald, John McMullen, and Glenn Mack now hosting the Eagles pregame show and, of course, host on the weekends on WIP. Um, G Mac, I know you were probably not listening to our number one of the show today. But uh, we had John, John Stone is from Bleeding Green Nation. I asked him, what game is the must see? Got to be down there for the Eagles this year. He said, San Francisco. He said, secondly, maybe Buffalo. And he said, I'm trying hard to remember if during the Kelly era, the Bills ever came in. There's there's not a, a rivalry between these two teams. And I had to look it up. 1996, Buffalo came in to play the Eagles. Jim Kelly against Ty Detmer. Wow. Yeah. Ty Detmer, baby. Ty Detmer gutted Jim Kelly, Glenn Mack. Now, you don't remember that? I do not. The, the, the <laughs> Neither Eagles. do I. I don't remember that game. I said, how could I forget Mac now? And I were working together at the time. Yeah. It's Bill's Eagles. How the hell do I have no recollection of that game? The 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 only real significant Bill's Eagles game moment that I remember was the Randall Cunningham mm. run around the end zone, duck under Bruce Smith, throw the pass that ended up being a 91-yard touchdown to Freddie Barnett. That's that's my Eagle Bills kind of all-time moment. Hey, same here. I, that I remember. Yeah. Eagles Bills in 1996. Right over my head. Shame on me. Shame on you, though. Thanks for sharing in my shame. I appreciate that. Great it's a long thing. time ago, Jody. <laughs> yeah. on, I, 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 we all had to look it up. That was, you know, that was pretty bad. That was the year Rodney Pete got hurt, and yeah. Ty Detmer had to play a lot. And the Eagles made the playoffs. Yeah, it did That's really well. Impressive. Uh, did really well. They had, listen. They had such good defense back then. Yeah, they could. They could win. Yeah, they yeah. did. All right. Speaking of defense, I talk about this year's Eagles defense linebacker Johnny Mack and I keep coming back to this. Peter King wrote a column a couple of weeks ago, ranked the team, said I hate doing this, but then he went ahead and did it. Power rankings of all the teams <laughs> in the National Football League, and the Eagles number one. And he said, a team I can't find a weakness on. Uh, I think a little hyperbole by Peter there because linebacker to me is a weakness. Even if you love N'Kobe Dean, which I do love them from the minute they drafted him in the third round. Uh, Nicholas Morrow. Yeah, Christian Ellis has made a couple of plays in OTAs, picked off passes in seven and seven. 11 on 11 going to be much uh, different, more difficult come September. Is linebacker a weakness for the Philadelphia Eagles this year, Glenn? I don't think it's particularly weakness, guys, because I think the way they de-emphasize linebackers makes it a less important position for the team, if that makes any sense. So it's not one where when you lose T.J. Edwards, when you lose Kaiser White, you're in terrible trouble because those guys – and I know, listen, they, they, uh, excuse me, Edwards made a lot of tackles. But when I think of the top 25 plays from last year, I don't know that T.J. Edwards or Kaiser White are in any of them. I think it's a plug-and-play position for them, and I think those guys should be able to come in. <clears throat> you know, we, we didn't see much of N'Kobe Dean last year. We saw him a little bit in a couple of games. He looked good in those limited opportunities. By all accounts, he's really smart. He's going to wear the green dot, which means he's going to be the guy on the field all the time calling the plays. You hope because of his size he can hold up. But I think I think he should be fine based on how good he was in college, and I think Nick, Nicholas Morrow uh, is going to be okay. Listen, he led the Bears in tackles last yeah led the Bears in tackles last year, which again may not be the greatest accomplishment. I think everybody was running through their front line, so guys were coming right at him. But I think they'll be fine, and I think given how they are so strong at the line in the secondary. It's not going to be a problem. You know, to play a little devil's advocate with that, because I think you're right, Glenn. I think that's the way the Eagles look at it, is it's just sort of a plug-and-play position. And you're right, there weren't a ton of splash plays from T.J. Edwards and Kaiser White. But I'll tell you what, plugging in T.J. Edwards was a hell of a lot better than plugging in Eric Wilson a couple years ago. The Eagles have been through this. They've gone down that route with poor linebackers. Nate Gary fans like to bring up, um, you know, the Paul Warlows of the world, the Corey Nelsons that never even, the LJ Forts that never even panned out. They tried to plug them in, but they couldn't play. TJ could play. Yeah. 
play. I, I, hey, I don't want to take anything away from T.J. Edwards. I think Kaiser White was just a guy, but I think T.J. Edwards was, was pretty good. Can Morrow be that guy? I don't know. I mean, I you know, the, the game I remember was the Bears game against the Eagles last year. He had the most tackles on the field. I think he had 11 or 12 tackles that day. I think he's going to be a guy who will tackle guys who are near him uh, and not make a lot of, you know, interceptions, force fumbles, other plays than that. And I think on this defense, he played every play of the every single play for the Bears last year and was perfectly cromulent, perfectly decent. I think he can be that. Hopefully he can be that and or how he goes out and gets an upgrade because we saw him do that a couple times last year during the summer, yeah. picking up uh, a cornerback who turned into an all pro and a safety who had a damn good season for him. And both of those were after camp uh, additions, All right, um, or at least after summer workout conditions. Let me ask you about the guy who's going to be calling those signals for the Philadelphia Eagles, Sean Desai. Change of defensive coordinator, Jonathan Gannon, right, wrong, or indifferent. John and I are more fans, uh, defenders, than detractors. I think you're, kind of, you're a guy who's, who's gone back and forth on that. Um, I, I like what I've heard from Sean Desai. The interviews that he's done, his track record is his track record. I think he's got all the verbal answers. We also speculate that it's going to be a very similar defense to the one that they had last year with Jonathan Gannon. How different is it going to be? Is it going to be we're not even going to be able to tell the difference between the size defense and Gannon's defense? Will he come in in here and tinker? How do you think the Eagle defense is going to look under their new defensive coordinator? Frustratingly similar. Um, and, <laughs> and, and I realize that when I say that, they did lead the league in sacks and got close to the record, and they were very good in, uh, well, for part of the season in takeaways, and it was a very effective defense. Um, I think it's going to be the same scheme. I think that's the scheme that Nick Sirianni wants to run. And so that's the scheme that they're going to run. I imagine maybe just on a hunch and a hope that the is going to be a little bit more aggressive, but I think that um, barring big changes in personnel, it's going to be the same defense, the same scheme that it was last year. And again, it was really effective. Yeah. I was not, uh, the biggest fan of Jonathan Gannon. Um, I certainly wasn't one of the people who said he should be fired after 11 weeks when they were 10 and one. Um, <clears throat> Evidently but, we said it in a press conference. I don't remember it, but we were. Yeah. Calling I for don't him either. To be fired. Yeah. He said it. Yeah. Listen, yeah. part of the reason that it's so easy to dislike Jonathan Gannon is because of some of the things he said after he left and his personality. And I think the Arizona Cardinals are going to be five and 12 this year. And that's perfectly great. With well, me. five, you're giving them a lot. <laughs> okay. I, five might five. be optimistic there, <laughs> GMAC. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. They'll be contending for the first pick of the draft. Um, so I, I just, I don't think that's going <laughs> to be, if you look at the top differences in the Eagles last year, it, it's not going to include the defensive scheme. All right, I'm I'm going to call myself out, Glenn, because I should have uh, sweet. I I should have asked Nick Sirianni in the very brief time we had the spring to see this team. What the hell is Matt Patricia doing here? And I forgot to ask. Yeah. What the hell is Matt Patricia doing here? What what? It's so bizarre to me for two reasons, Glenn. One, the sleigh reason. That's the obvious one. Yeah. The less obvious one. You got a first year defensive coordinator coming in with all these expectations. You just mentioned the 70 sacks, number two overall, number one in passing defense. And that wasn't good enough because they didn't like the defensive coordinator. So he's got those expectations. And now all of a sudden you got, you know, Mr. Defense sitting on his shoulder with the Belichick tint or whatever that's worth, but people know him. People understand his reputation. Why is he here? And they created a spot. This spot didn't exist on this coaching staff. Senior defensive assistant. Now, yeah. they also have Marcus Brady as the senior offensive assistant. Did they did they replace Jonathan Gannon and Shane Steichen with two people on each side of the football? I don't think so. Can we include chewing the pencil is one of the things that's particularly annoying yeah. about the guy, yeah. right? Yeah. Get that sure. one in there, putting the pencil behind the ear. Yeah. Um, I hope not. And I don't 
think so. Um, because I think just from the brief track record we have from Nick Sirianni, he likes and trusts young coaches. I'm, I'm guessing, and again, John, because this stuff wasn't asked, I don't really know. But I'm guessing it's more of an advisor to the coach kind of role. Um, I know Nick Fangio was only in here for a short time last year, but maybe it's a longer term version of that. Just kind of your, you know, listen, the, the, the mob has like the, the regular advisors and then they have the consigliere. It's kind of yeah. separate yeah. and just reports yeah. to the, uh, the Don. Maybe he's like in that consigliere role. Could be, and I will make a prediction here. It will affect John more than you and I because he's down there every day, Glenn. Matt Patricia, not going to be made available very often, if oh, at all no. this year. No, and, they and will keep is. him well under wraps. He's not, we're, we're, you're going to have to get your answer from Sirianni and then decide whether you want to buy it or not, but you're not going to be able to get it straight from the horse's mouth. You are right. He's a consigliere that will be kept in the background this season. Mark my Yeah, and, and may I say that those – Rare times, if and when he is made available, John, as you know, uh, having worked for Belichick, he's going to give you nothing. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. a sneer. Well, except he was <laughs> maybe a pencil to compare Darius Slay to some of the best cornerbacks in the NFL that got yeah. him in trouble the last time he was there. But then he was head coach. Now he's just a consigliere. So yeah, he'll probably refer uh, back to his Belichick days. All right, GMAC, I got a uh, important question for you. Did you get your uh, NFC championship ring? Uh, <laughs> no. That, no. Uh, we know Howard's got a Super Bowl yeah, How, ring. You know Howard's, Howard's, he Howard's got, got a championship one. ring. No. And as the host of the Eagles pregame show, you should have one of those puppies, yeah. too. You should uh, have a Super Bowl ring, by the way. Why didn't they give you a Super a, Bowl a, ring? A, I, I do not, nor would I ask for one. Um, I think the freshest, the most refreshing approach to this thing is by uh, Mike Quick, because Mike Quick, of course, as a member of the broadcast team, also was given one. Yeah. And when I do public appearances with Mike, I say, Mike, I, I never see you wear your ring. And Mike says, I didn't earn a ring when I played. I don't deserve to wear a ring. The only people who deserve to wear the ring are the guys who played and the guys who coached. And so yeah. if Mike Quick doesn't think he's worthy of a ring, hey, this is my wedding ring. I wear it proudly. That's all I got. Good yeah. for you. Yeah, I agree. I agree with Mike. I'm I'm glad he thinks that way. But they yeah, gave I mean, maybe him everything. The if you're the trainer, if you're you know one of somebody yeah. else who's you know well the all... coaches, yeah, the yeah. trainers. Yeah. Yeah, you know, guys. Ricky's got one. Our our buddy Ricky Ricardo, he's got one. Um, you know, Howard's God got one. Yeah. yeah, Jeffrey and, Jeffrey and, and Lurie was feeling. He was happy. Yeah. Um, so you know, I. I I, I get to see Merrill a lot and so on. And, and Merrill, Merrill doesn't wear his on a day-to-day -day basis, but if Merrill is going to something where he's, you know, kind of showing off a charity event, uh, Merrill will bring it and let people see it and so on. And that's, that's kind of yeah. sharing it, which I think is a little bit different. Yeah. He's probably got the top down too. He's driving up with the top down with the ring out. Uh, yeah. living large. Merrill's proud of that. Yeah. Yeah. Merrill deserves to live large. Be. Yeah. He should be. He might tip over with that ring, though. That's a big <laughs> ring. <laughs> he does, his, does lifts. <laughs> Mac, let me uh, run this one by you. Something we've been kicking around for a couple weeks here on the show. And it uh, got raised to another level by the head coach, as a matter of fact. Thought during this offseason, a more highly quality third receiver would be something the Eagles would be looking at. If uh, Alameda Zacchaeus is it, he's a different type of receiver. He's more of a slot guy. Mm -hmm. Quez is your third guy, plays in the slot, slot, but also can move outside. I don't know that they're going to do that with Alameda. Um, didn't draft anybody at the wide receiver position, a couple undrafted free agents. I thought there'd be more of a move to upgrade that position during the offseason, which makes me sound like a Quez Watkins hater which I'm not really, but I'm not a huge Quez Watkins fan either. Is Quez just going to shut everybody up like Sirianni suggested the last time he talked to the media? Oh, Quez, he's hearing people say he stinks. You watch, Quez Watkins is going to be, uh, I'm having a tough time believing it. Do you think Quez is the man? Do you think they'll look for another individual? Do you think Alameda Zacchaeus 
is the guy to step up and, and make Quez less of a factor? How do you think the next wide receiver, we'll just say next wide receiver down the depth chart after Smith and Brown play out this year? Look, I, I'm still not over the Super Bowl with that guy. I'm I'm still thinking about was it the Cowboys game where he didn't fight for those 50-50 balls, right? I'm that that I'm still bugged by that thing. Um, the the commander loss at home where he got stripped after he yeah, made the big yeah. touchdown yes, field. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And and I think Nick Sirianni and then Jalen Hurts both talking him up are done with motive to both give him confidence and also kind of try to silence the critics. Um, I'm, I am not a big Quez fan. I would best was t- two years ago. I th- he had a pretty good year. I think he had 43 catches and he had, you know, averaged 15 yards a catch had some TDs. Uh, I don't think he's coming back to those numbers at all in part because they have two really good, uh, wide receivers to start. I maybe, although I can't, I couldn't spell his name. If you gave me 20 tries, I still think Zacchaeus is going to be pretty good. And I think he's going to get more action uh, than Quez got last year. I feel sorry for John McMullen, who actually has to type stories and is going to go to spell. Alameda, Day. I already got it. Uh, yeah, you got that? I you got, got the last yeah. name too? Uh, Zacchaeus, Alameda Zacchaeus. Yes. Yeah, St. Joe's prep, the whole thing. Yeah, I would say, on, you know, a little, little spelling bee here. Go for it. Anytime. Uh, it's not that bad. O L A M I D E Z A C C H E A U S. Alameda Zacchaeus. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, anytime I get to say Halapuli Bati Baita, I get very excited. Uh, so I just throw that in there. Yeah. Um, now, Glenn, Jody tells me you're on vacation. So first, thanks for joining us while you're on no vacation. Problem. So I don't know if you saw, but there was a little video going around. John Gruden uh, sort of coaching up some players, yes. um, you know, trying to revamp his own reputation. Um, one of those players was Carson Wentz. Yeah. Carson yeah. Wentz is out there working out with John Gruden. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hey, you know what? I think one of Carson's problems when he was here is he sort of left to his own devices. He didn't do that kind of stuff in the offseason that certain players do. I think it's a positive. He's out there working with other players. I'm I'm curious because you've been around this town for so long and around the NFL. He was so good in 2017. Sure. And man. I, I've never seen anything like it. I try to say to somebody at that apex and it wasn't, you know, we bring up RG three who had the great rookie year that was directly related to injuries. Carson had a lot of injuries. He was never the same after the torn ACL, but he played really well. It's just not at the same level he, as he did in 2017. And then it was just off a cliff. And the pandemic the same, year. He, if, I'm sorry to interrupt you. He was never the same from the moment they drafted Jalen Hurts. That was the turning point. Yeah. I mean, that was it. I, yeah. You know, with him, it's, it's, there certainly was some physical in it, but it was a lot of it was mental. And yeah, I saw all that. And I saw the tweet that said Carson Wentz, uh, you know, doing workout, uh, waiting, looking and waiting for the, for the, the, yeah, that's Adam Schefter. Like, There's a yeah, price to I mean, pay to be an information broker, Glenn. Yeah, There's a price to pay. The right, the right opportunity is, is anybody going to hire him? I don't think Carson Wentz is going to have eight or ten offers. But he, listen, there is that much talent that somebody is going to think, hey, I can get him back on track. The biggest issue with Wentz to me um, over the last couple of years, in addition to alienating his teammates and Gail was getting into a fight before the Super Bowl and all that baggage that we know about, was just his judgment got so, so bad. Um, I will never forget him when he played for the Colts in the end zone, switching the ball from his right hand to his left hand to throw an interception, a pick six. Um, and just a whole a whole run of those mistakes that showed to me kind of a desperation, right? The baseball equivalent of the guy who wants to get up and hit a six-run home run. Um, I do not think it is impossible that Wentz can have I was going to say a second act a third act a fourth act whatever act this could be and come back and be a decent quarterback in the NFL uh I think Gruden's probably the right guy if I were if I were advising Carson Wentz Gruden would be a guy I think I'd want 
to try to unlock it because Gruden can be tough, right? We've seen Gruden in those yeah, camp, oh, quarterback yeah. camps where yeah. he'll just strip a guy down. Hello, Chris Sims. Um, if I were betting, I'd bet against it, but I, I, I don't think it's impossible. I don't know where. I'm, I don't know what franchise right now has – the right it would have to be an injury right you know yeah. desperation back in the you know where carson took over here it was and, and, uh, and hey we've seen those situations yeah. right yeah sam bradford traded minnesota yeah because teddy bridgewater got hurt Kurt warner won a super bowl in those yeah. situation yeah. i mean we, we've seen it throughout history it is not impossible that week three carson wentz ends up in some distant borough playing for somebody and you know, I'm not malicious enough. I, I, I think I would wish him well. Not All right, G well, Mac. Well. You, you know, uh, <laughs> I enjoy when I'm on Sundays with you on WIP. One of the features that you've been doing for a long time, which is what we're watching. I almost feel guilty when I don't have something new to bring to the <laughs> you when I'm on on Sundays. Yeah, but we've got something coming up in July. I don't know if you've seen previews for this or whatever, but in July, at some point, I know you and I are going to talk about it. Netflix has a docu-series coming up called QBs 2022, where yeah. they look back at the season that three quarterbacks in the NFL had last year. One An being, Eagles quarterback, too. Right. Mm-hmm. One being Patrick Mahomes, one being Kirk Cousins, and one being Marcus Mariota. So they're kind of spreading yeah. it out. The yeah. high of the high, the high but limited – the uh oh, what the hell happened here? So yeah. I actually like the three guys that they picked. Yeah. If you're an Eagles fan, and I know this is uh, kind of hypothetical, and you either have to watch them all or you have to watch none, would you rather see Patrick Mahomes and how the season <laughs> finished for him? The Kirk Cousins comes into Philadelphia uh, and proves he can't win at night. And Jeff- yeah. Justin Jefferson does nothing against that Eagle defense. And the whole Marcus Mariota elsewhere, that's how he becomes an eagle, by being pushed out of Atlanta. If you got to make a call, yay or nay, and you got to watch it all, are you in or you out? Oh, got to watch it all. And, yes, it will hurt when I see the the red and yellow uh, confetti coming down at the end of the Super Bowl instead of the blue and the white confetti and Andy Reid winning it. And, and uh, Nothing against Andy Reid, but no thanks. Uh, and all of that, and then what the hell happened to the defense in the second half? And I can curse Jonathan Gannon one more time. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that one will hurt. Um, the Cousins one will be get me my popcorn because this will be a fun night. And the Mariota one, I really do want to watch because that thing turned bad. And my sense is it was as much play or more than it was his play. It was his team dynamics and what was going on. And and I want to know, like, how did that all go sour? Because how does that for forebode not forebode? Has how does that uh, bait for the Eagles moving forward? Right? I mean, what 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 is this guy about? So I'm definitely I'm all in for that. Also in for the Wilt docu series in July. Also, there's gonna be a lot of good doc sports documentaries yeah. this summer. Yeah, the trailer looked great for the uh, uh, the quarterback one. Yeah, um, maybe we'll get to see some Alameda Zacchaeus down in Atlanta too. That's right. A little some bonus, passes. a Deep bonus threat, coverage. Some TDs. That'll get Jody excited. <laughs> At real Glenn Mac now on Twitter. Make sure you follow Glenn there. Uh, obviously host on WIP with Jody Mack. Mike Sealski on the weekends does a tremendous job there. Uh, the podcast, What's Brewing PA? Uh, any good IPAs we need? Any good new IPAs coming out from, from you guys, Glenn? Well, the one I would tell you, and it's it's a, a golden ale, but uh, I'm definitely trying to uh, build up the market as much as I can because it's for a great cause. We uh, released the – and Jody was at the party, which I very much appreciate last week – the Fransky and L.A. Bedlam at go. the Bank Golden Ale to benefit the Philadelphia Youth Sports Consortium. Uh, we had a great charity event last week. We raised $25,000, including a nice guy, uh, Pat McLaughlin, who paid some bucks to uh, drink beers and eat burgers with Jody and I, which we'll set up soon. Nice. Very nice. much very much looking uh, forward to that. All right. Last thing for me, Mac. And it may have an effect on the Eagles. It may have no effect on the Eagles whatsoever. 
the NFL owners have been told, be prepared. We may actually have a vote this week to end the reign of terror for uh, some. Uh, Dan <laughs> Snyder as the owner hmm. of the Commanders. I don't know about you, but I was always okay with Snyder owning the <laughs> Commanders because <laughs> I think he was bad at it. Yes. And I think it, although, yeah, the Eagles lost last year to Washington at home. The only game that Jalen Hurts lost all year long as a starting quarterback. So I got to at least eat that one. But the the, the Eagles have been uh, the, the better of the uh, two in that series between the two. Should Dan Snyder be missed by Eagles fans? Yes. Yeah, his ineptitude was worth, well, if not two wins a year, pretty much. I don't know what the record is over the last 10 years, but, I mean, they've been through, I think, seven coaches and 15 quarterbacks and 29 offensive coordinators and uh, and empty stadiums, and it was great for the Eagles. So, in that sense, I will miss him. I also really dislike it because I hate the whole notion that the guy who owns the Sixers, yeah. who also owns the Devils, yeah. is now going to own Washington. It's like, what the hell? You know, you're yeah. either one DC of market, not. Billy market, New York market, essentially. Um, yeah, that's weird. That yeah, is I don't weird. like that at all. I, yeah. I, I, listen, I understand Jeff Lurie is from Boston, and I understand it is not unusual for your sports owner to be from somewhere else. But if you're here, be committed. Be one of us or don't. And I think uh, Harris is, you know, again, just in it to, to raise the money of these assets. Don't like it. Yeah, I wish I had Josh Harris's money. Damn, he must have a lot that he, he could pull. Must, well, we all do. Give him a call. He'll, we he'll, all he'll do. Follow yeah. him around. And, and and Josh Harris what? reminds me of Red McCombs. You guys remember Red McCombs? He used to he used to buy sports teams. Yeah, um, you know, birds and value. Vikings, right? Yeah, yeah, um, bunch of teams. Nugget. He owned basketball. He he would always he would flip. Uh, Sports teams make a lot yeah, of money. But this is, it, these are our rivals, right? I mean, yeah. I, I think if he owned, it would bother me less. It would bother me, but it would bother me less if he owned the St. Louis Blues or the LH Chargers yeah. or whatever. But this is in the damn division, these teams. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but see, when he has to go there, he's actually got to get in a plane. Now all he has to do is helicopter, a helicopter down from New York. So we're going to see him in the owner's box at Washington Games? Uh, maybe with the new stadium. They don't. I don't think they have an owner's box in, at Bet yeah, X. Well. Okay. Oh, they but have an know, owner's he... box. It's way up in the corner, right near the press, when you're down there doing oh, the Commanders games. As a matter of fact, my favorite thing is when Merrill Merrill is on oh, the games. Oh, he loves, a, he loves you know bitching about that. that state. I love. That. Oh, so he uh, loves that. Yeah. GMAC, we love whenever you come on with us. Thank you much for doing so. I will be uh, catching up with you on the air on WIP soon enough, my brother. Thanks for jumping in today. Always a pleasure, guys. Anytime. Be well. That Thanks, is Glenn man. Mack now, uh, host of the Eagles pregame show on uh, 94 WIP, yeah. the Eagles radio network. And yeah. By the way, uh, re remember FedEx Field? Remember Jalen collapsing, uh, the railing collapsing right oh, in front yeah. of Jalen Hurts? Oh, shoot. And that could have gone, that could have gone real oh, bad. Yeah. That was this close to going real bad. He, he no sold it too. That was amazing. That shows you how calm and collected the guy was. Uh, just pick the people up and, Kept going on his way. I went down to FedEx Field as a fan. A buddy of mine invited me to go down. He had tickets. Uh, a buddy of mine from Delaware. Uh, so uh, owned a bar and uh, part of his buying beer from the beer company, whatever. Gave him two tickets to a Redskin game because he was a, yes, they were the Redskins at that time, Redskin fan. And he said, come on, drive down and we'll go to the game. And because they were freebies, they were not the greatest seats in the world. The incline in that stadium walking up the stairs on the top level, I seriously had to like sit down and take a rest. It was serious work to get up as high as we were sitting. And I was dead tired. I said, guess what? Start, you're going to get the beers. I'm not going anywhere. These stairs are ridiculous. I'm not going back down and coming back up with beer in my hand. Oh, I man, need that, to, that I place need is And this is 15 years ago. This wasn't last year that yeah. the old man McDonald couldn't get up and down the stairs. No. This was McDonald in his 40s, couldn't get up and down the stairs. That place is such a dump for an NFL. They had a sewage pipe leaking on fans. Uh, it, it, it is awful. It is awful. They um, do need a new stadium, and let's see if Paris can get it done. Uh, but that that is just. Oh, he'll get it done. Uh, they'll, they'll, I mean, they'll be giving them. 
That's one of the reasons he bought that team because everybody's going to line up because they're so happy Snyder's gone. He's going to get great deals, whether it's in Northern Virginia um, or they put it in D.C. Um, he's going to get a great deal and he's going to get a new stadium. And he's going to make a lot of money. I'm not a big Josh Harris fan as an owner, but I'm a big Josh Harris fan as a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I I know where people are coming from because, you know, I grew up uh, in New York. My father worked for the New York Mets, so I went to Chase Stadium umpteen, t- hundreds, borderline thousands of time in my youth. So that was the stadium that I grew up in. And toward the tail end of it, it had become a dump. It was as the, the, the stadium yeah. in Washington is yeah. now a dump. But I always used to defend it and say, yeah but it's my dump because I watched the Mets win two world series there. The commanders is that stadium, their dump. Oh no, they hate it. The the fans hate it. I mean, the Eagles fans take over that place every year. I mean, every year part, part of the reason why commanders aren't very good now, but yeah, they, they, they haven't been terrible. They've been competitive. No, they hate it. They hate it. Uh, they hate the stadium. They they hate the owner. So that's part of right, it. As but they well. didn't win a championship in that building. Um, that was that was still no, RFK. Was still was RFK the yeah. They won the Super Bowl, which was also a dump, by the way. RFK. The oh, end, I was but, with RFK yeah. with my buddy, same guy. He's a Redskin fan, so we go yeah. down. I enjoyed that, and that was uh, when we, when we went to uh, the FedEx. It was new, and you could already yeah. see it had issues. We yeah. went to RFK. That was old. Yeah, it was. Uh, but that was cool. That was the feeling of a stadium. That was an NFL. Well, stadium. yeah. I mean, there's that part of it. If you go back to JFK Stadium here, I mean, that was a dump too. But you had a feel of a uh, of a real stadium. Yeah, it uh, did. RFK did down there, but it was a dump at the end. RFK. You I could mean, feel. You could feel the stadium shake underneath you under your feet we had good seats in that one that was probably part of the problem they were afraid it would collapse exactly (laughs) but that when you make it out and you're out and uh uncovered you're uh wow that was cool that was fun but if the stadium comes falling down on your head like it did on jalen hurts over at the new stadium yeah that's a little worrisome he's mcmullen on mcdonald coming back we need to put a bow on the show here on birds 365 